Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be about upgrading your CX-20 to the NASA Lite, which you can actually upgrade the NASA Lite to a version 2. Just check out my other video about that. The only issue with this NASA, this would have been a really quick step-by-step, -step, but uh, NASA decided to be jerks, I guess, and uh, you can't really use a CX-20 transmitter unless you follow my other video, CX-20 transmitter to DGI NASA flight modes fix. I came up with special firmware for the NASA that will convert the uh, flight modes to the NASA. So before you get the NASA or if you're thinking about it, check out that other video to see if you actually want to use your transmitter that came with the CX-20 or order another one. That's up to you guys. Later on in life, I can make another video showing you how to use the flight modes with the uh, FlySky receivers like the... FSIA6B, FSIA10, I think it is, whatever. I can upload another video with that. So that's the only thing that really slows down this NASA because it's pretty dummy proof. It's actually really simple to get going. And um, yeah, so I'll just jump into the video now, or the steps at least for. So the first thing you, you want to get out of the way is soldering. And uh, you need to solder two wires. You can actually strip these wires back and twist them on. But just keep in mind, this is the heart of your APM to a point where if anything fails with your power, your APM will go out. So it might not be a good idea just to twist. You might actually want to solder it. So my unit here came with uh, one of these guys here that just plugs into it or whatever. And this is for the USB. Yours might actually come with the USB built on. So obviously I'm going to show you with my setup, but it's the same setup even with the USB built on. So the two wires you want to solder is the positive and a negative for the 12 volts. So right there on your CX-20. And after that's out of the way, you can just put this guy off to the side. Your B cable, just tape it up because you don't need it. If you want to use it for 5 volts for something else like um, LEDs or something else, who knows, it's clean 5 volts. So just uh, you can use it for that if you want. Just tape it up for now anyways and put it to the side. All right, the way the motors go on this guy is, this is motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four. All, all your uh, server wires on your CX-20 for your motors, for your ESCs, come with three wires. Now this is a really important step here, is remove the red wires out of all the harnesses. I've already done it with these guys here, so I'm only left with the servo and, I mean with the uh, switch and the ground. The reason why you have to remove it is because it's actually live. I've tested it with my meter on the outputs for the motor and it this becomes uh, 5 volts and it can easily short out on something on your CX-20. So again, it's important that you move it. All right, that came out easy for me, but yours will most likely be stuck on the wires or whatever. So just pull it gently apart. I think you can just save the sender or whatever because it might come in handy for another project. All right, so with all those red wires removed, you can start placing them on the motors. All right, so plugging the motors in on this NASA, it's labeled M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, and M6, obviously. And then, uh, so the way it goes here is this is number one, and number one goes into M1 with the servo on the bottom. Now the NASA here comes with this style of cables and they actually kind of only let you plug it in one way. And these ones can be kind of a pain in the butt, but these ones here in the NASA can be even worse. Um, you have to be a little bit forceful to get them in the first time. After that, they're just gonna slide in it as you're gonna see in a second or whatever. Just the first time, keep in mind, it won't be as easy. So that's motor one, motor two, right at the bottom. And that goes to M2. Like that. Right now it's not going down as far. So it can be a little bit difficult to get in. So I had to kind of push it hard actually there. So that's two. Number three. Right at the bottom. Goes for M3. And then M4. This guy here. And he goes to M4. Just make sure it's in there. Give it an extra little push just to make sure. And then these wires are short, so you're gonna be limited to how far you can actually place your APM and how center you can actually get. Now this APM here is actually pretty cool because inside of it, 
the gyro and the accelerometer is actually encased in foam. So you don't really need to use um, anything underneath the sea. Under, ah. So you don't really need to use anything under the NASA. I just use uh, some carpet stuff. This is not really that sticky anymore. So I'm gonna have to find some more or whatever, or maybe hot glue it into place. And then my guy just goes like that. The reason why I have to put something under it is because it actually hits against these two guys here when you plug in your other wires. All right, so now with the motors out of the way, I'm just gonna use the cables that came with it. If you're gonna use these cables, just keep in mind there's gonna be a lot of them. A lot of wires, like the red one, red wire you don't really need, and all the grounds you don't really need. But these wires here don't like going sideways and they don't like sharing the pins. So the first one here is A, E, T, R, and 1. And then on this APM here, it's listed A, E, T, R, U. We'll also be using X2. But for now, we're just going to plug this guy into A, like that. And this guy goes into A with switch on the bottom. Switch at the top again. These cables only let you go in one way anyways. And that's maybe why you might want to think about a different transmitter as well, something with PPM. Then you're only running the one wire. But once the CX20 is closed, it doesn't really matter how many wires you have, as long as it's not pushing against your APM. All is good. Next is T, and T goes into T. So it's made it actually quite simple for the step-by-steps. -step. It's too bad they messed up with the transmitter. Well, not really messed up. They purposely messed up. And the next one is R, and again, goes into R. Right, so that's as far as I can really show you with this guy here. Now, I'm just gonna show you with my mod. So again, you're gonna have to watch that video in case you think you're wondering what the hell this thing is. So this guy here just plugs into one. Like that. And of course, I'm going to tape this up better. And then this guy here goes down on the bottom between you and that. So what this guy does here is it's going to convert the um, these two dip switches here. It's going to convert it so it's for the NASA. So after you upload my firmware and everything, it's really just those two wires you got to plug in. If you follow the same wiring scheme I had done on this one. Not the same as I done in the video, I did it a little bit differently. Just found a more simpler, cleaner way. And then you got a wire here from your power module. On your power module, you might have actually have two, one for the USB. And this guy plugs into X3 right at the end. And again, it's switch on the bottom, but this isn't really a switch. It's kind of treated like a power module, like a sensing wire type thing. All right, so that's out of the way. And then uh, your USB wire. So the USB guy plugs into the LED. It kind of seems like it shouldn't really belong there, but it does. And it goes like that. And the way I'm going to run this guy here is through these two holes here, or just one of them. I'm just going to run it through here, and I'm just going to tape this to one of my legs. I'm not really keeping this in the CX-20. So you might want to get more creative with a more stable or more way of doing it. And the reason why I'm using those holes is I kind of forgot to bring that up. You can no longer use your LEDs that came with your CX-20, so you're going to have to chuck them. If you watch my other video, I did add some features onto my uh, board here where you can just plug your LEDs into it and then you can use this again. So that'll be up to you if you actually want to try it, but you're going to have to probably get some advice from me to how to wire it. Okay, so that's that. And then the uh, GPS. So the GPS comes with the M8. All right, so with the GPS, remove the bottom of it. And I really lucked out too, because I was kind of curious with this GPS. It came with the four wires, so I was just kind of wondering how they did it. Maybe it was I2C or something, but it actually is just two uh, TXs. And uh, I really lucked out, like I said, by opening it and checking things out because I'll show you a picture right now, what I found, it was a little gift 
gift from the factory. Now, if I didn't see this just by chance, I could have been flying this one day and it could have shorted out or unshorted or whatever. Like, say if it wasn't shorted, as I was flying it, it could have shorted and I probably would have lost my uh, CX-20. But in this case, that little wire was actually shorted between the two TXs and the positive. It actually went right inside and shorted on all three of them. So again, I lucked out with that. So this guy here comes with the two ends. I would suggest unplugging it from the other end inside or whatever and then feeding it through the bottom hole here because otherwise you might get confused with the uh, four wires if you have the same as me and they're all black. And then the GPS guy, so I just continue to continue on, plugs right into the EXP. Mine also had a little nub here I had to sand down. So in case you can't get it to work or fit in there, it, it might be the same problem as mine. So that guy plugs in like that. All right, so that's it for the steps here. I, know, I think I'm only running on 12 minutes. After I edit it, maybe it'll be a little less. And that's it, so I'll show you a little bit of the software. And uh, yeah, I think this is one of the quickest um, upgrades you can do to your CX-20. It's just really too bad about the transmitter. Um, keep in mind, I I'm not sure if I brought up at the beginning of the video or whatever, stabilize and manual is 100% different. Don't, uh, actually probably, won't, you probably won't want to use manual. I'm probably going to edit my firmware on this guy and I'm just going to remove it or add a switch so you can just put the switch or a jumper on two pins and you'll have the option to have manual and then I'll remove, then you can remove the jumper and it'll change the manuals into alt hold. This guy with the CX-20 remote with manual mode is just insane. You'll end up crashing it right away. Uh, DJI, they took the route of not really giving us much options in their software. So if you try it, what will end up happening is as soon as you go in manual and you lift off the ground, you touch your transmitter, it'll go totally sideways this way, this way, you'll end up crashing it right away. I tried playing with the alt gain and that did nothing. All they had to do was add some limits so you can only go like 15 to 20 percent certain ways but again they decided to uh, do whatever they wanted to do to their customers I guess. I'm not really going to get into that because I'll get into a big rant. And then uh, yeah so I'm going to show you guys the software. All right, so you, at this stage of the steps here, you'll probably want to have your CX-20 closed up, but you might want to also just test it first anyways, just to make sure it's working, and you can just redo it all after. So plug in your NASA USB cable, and then plug in your battery. Open up the NASA M2 version 2 software. So once you plug it in, oops, the light here should go green. And then right away here, it should start going like that. All right. And now you can turn on your CX-20 remote. Get this out of the way. See here. And just confirm your buttons are working. And that's go to basic and then go to RC. And then for your settings here too, for A, E, T, and R, you'll want to do a calibration. And then uh, this guy here should just stay like that. It shouldn't be on normal, it should be on reverse. That's the only one like that. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my remote. And I'm just gonna confirm it works. So it's all good. So I, I made it the same way as the CX-20. So 01 is uh, GPS and then 11 is um, alt hold. And the only way to enable that part of it, again, is uh, I don't want to get too much detail about it. You'll have to watch the other video. But you go to Advance and then um, IOC. And you just have to check, put a check mark in here. But you have to do a calibration first. So I'll show you actually how to enable that right now. Um, yeah. So what other things do I have to show you first before I do that? So under voltages here, you might want to lower these as well. 
because it'll want to land on you. It's actually a really good future happiness like, unless you're over like trees or something like that and then you'll lose basically all your throttle. That's another thing with this remote too is keep in mind that when you fly it, when you go, the, the quad won't lift off the ground on alt hold and in uh, GPS mode until you make it over the halfway mark. Once you reach the halfway mark on your transmitter or whatever, you always have to go up a bit and then find center again and then you can let go of it. I've read a lot of people putting springs in it so it's always bouncing back to center. So just keep that in mind as well. All right, so. Right, so I only have, uh, that's for orientation. So you can go to tools, and if your lid's actually on and you did the upgrade, you should have the advanced cal. So just click on this guy, it takes about two minutes to do it, and it'll go through all the process of uh, calibrating your APM. So unlike mission planners, there's not really much to at all to do in this software, basically just this one button. And then uh, you should be up and flying. I think that's actually it I want to show you guys in this software. It's just doing the, the one calibration and you can confirm my things are working. I showed you that. Um, I tried playing with the gains. They don't do nothing for manual mode. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So I'll just show you guys how to quickly get into calibration. I kind of forget here. Whereas you have to go back and forth from uh, manual to GPS. So you have to go back and forth, back and forth like this. So I'll just show you. So you unplug the NASA. So right this guy. After you do the compass calibration, then I suggest going back into the software and then doing um, the calibration again. So plug this guy in. Kind of have to hurry up with this guy. Then turn this on. And then go 0101 a bunch of times. And this light should go to an orange. So once it's at orange, you want to hold your quad up like this and do a whole 360 with your whole body. So you're facing north. Turn around a complete circle until you're facing north again or whichever direction you started with. And then the next time, point the quad down this way and do a whole another 360 with your body until you're facing the same way again. And then this light should turn a different color when you're done. And then that's it. So I'm just gonna unplug this and then jump back into the software. I might just fast forward this so I'm back in it. Right, so I'm back in the software and I think that was kind of pointless me jumping back at this guy here. Because the NASA is so basic and so user um, limited, I guess, I guess they just want their users to be able to get up and fly right away and to also buy their products. So that's uh, something else you have to keep in mind before you get this is if you want to use telemetry and stuff like that, you're going to have to get their products and stuff like that. Um, or you're going to have to look more into more hacks and mods and stuff as well. It's a very limited community, to me at least, or at least I haven't explored it that much. It's just a different scene because we're coming from an open source to a closed community where this company is more after making money than kind of like satisfying their users. But um, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm just gonna stop now before I get into another rant. And um, yeah, that's it guys. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'm always, uh, there to help you guys out if need be and if I know the answers. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.